Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Scott. I'm Professor of Anesthesiology and Critical Care Medicine, as well as the Division Chief of Surgical and Neuroscience Critical Care at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Critical Insights video series. In this video, I'll discuss how to use parameters provided by Acumen HPI software to optimise a patient's circulation, namely by managing preload and cardiac outputs and ensuring adequate perfusion pressure. Using the simple principle of fill flow pressure makes balancing the circulation very simple. Using this approach to hemodynamic management allows you to optimise preload to improve stroke volume and cardiac efficiency. Optimal filling of the left ventricle in turn optimises contractility. Optimising both stroke volume and contractility ensures an ideal cardiac output for a patient unless they have pre-existing cardiac dysfunction. Acumen HPI software provides several variables to understand fluid responsiveness, including stroke volume variation for ventilated patients in a regular RR rhythm, and also stroke volume. Stroke volume can be assessed in response to fluid challenge or via a passive leg raise, and can also be used in conditions in which SVV experiences limitations. In the OR setting, I normally assess fluid responsiveness after induction of anaesthesia and intubation and administration of positive pressure ventilation. Several small fluid challenges can be administered until stroke volume does not increase more than 10% or until stroke volume variability is less than 13%. This way we are optimising the patient's cardiac output and volume status prior to the surgery commencing and after physiological changes from drugs and ventilation. This makes it easier to detect any changes than if monitoring is initiated later within the surgery. Once we establish the patient's optimal stroke volume, say 70 mils per beat, we will try and maintain this target value throughout the surgery. We next need to ensure we have enough oxygen delivery. You can do a quick estimate by looking at the cardiac index. The cardiac index should be maintained over 2.2 litres per minute per metre squared and individualised to the patient. Once we know the flow and oxygen delivery are adequate, small fluid boluses can be administered to maintain the stroke volume. Blood should only be given if you feel the patient has lost blood or is near their nadir hematocrit where organ injury may occur, usually 7 to 8 grams per deciliter. To balance the circulation, low-dose vasopressors can be used to maintain a MAP goal of greater than 65 millimetres of mercury. In fit patients, a pure alpha agonist is a good choice, but in ASA 3 or 4 or other high-risk patients, a combined alpha and beta agonist may be the preferred choice, as it improves forward flow due to increased contractility. This technique really optimises two things, cardiac output and oxygen delivery, and mean arterial pressure. These are the two physiological values that have a large volume of data supporting that maintaining these values reduces downstream complications. This makes sense because we're ensuring enough oxygen and nutrient delivery to organs and also adequate perfusion pressure. Now I'd like to turn your attention to the HPI parameter. As this number rises closer to 100, the likelihood of the patient developing hypotension, as defined as a MAP less than 65, becomes increasingly likely with a sooner onset. An HPI value greater than 85 means there is a high likelihood of the patient becoming hypotensive soon. In my practical experience, it's not necessary to wait until HPI value is high. A significant rise in the number is warning you that the circulation is potentially unstable. Using the secondary screen allows you to see whether preload contractility or afterload are changing. If stroke volume is unchanged, I then check DP by DT for contractility. And if contractility is not the cause of the instability, it would then make sense to focus on SVR and MAP. If cardiac output and stroke volume are optimised and MAP is less than or approaching 65 millimetres of mercury, I will administer or increase a vasopressor. This technique should ultimately reduce the time the patient has a MAP below 65 millimetres of mercury. But most importantly, by using the principle of fill and flow first, before utilising or increasing vasopressors, you will optimise the circulation without causing inappropriate vasoconstriction, particularly of the splanchnic bed. Ischemia to the splanchnic bed is one cause of postoperative nausea and vomiting. This approach can also help you administer an adequate amount of fluid to meet perfusion needs 
while at the same time avoiding fluid overload. Well, I hope you enjoyed this guide to optimising the circulation using the Hemisphere Monitor and Acumen HPI software. Acumen HPI software can be used via the arterial line sensor or a non-invasive finger cuff. You can learn more about hemodynamic monitoring with Acumen HPI software by visiting the Edwards Clinical Education website as well as the HPI Learning Portal. Tune in to the next Critical Insights video where we'll continue our conversation on advanced hemodynamic monitoring. Like this video and subscribe to stay up to date on clinical education videos, symposium recordings and more.